Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about some more books. Today I would like to talk to you all about Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff. Now a couple weeks ago I saw the trailer for the HBO adaptation of this book which is being produced by Jordan Peele and JJ Abrams I believe. So I watched that trailer and I was very interested. So I just picked up the book from the library and I went ahead and read it. So Lovecraft Country. This book is about a black family in the 1950s who deal with some Lovecraftian shenanigans. So I mentioned earlier that I blew through this book and I really did. I didn't expect to blow through it so fast because I had heard that it was set up like a series of interconnected short stories and short stories aren't really my thing. I like a solid story arc with some some nice build up all throughout the book. I have to say that's one of the biggest positives in favor of this book is the fact that it is an absolute page turner. It is very addicting. It's paced really well. And the fact that it's a bunch of short stories ends up being kind of meaningless because the short stories are all interconnected and they're all in service of a larger plot and all of them play a part in that plot even if it's not immediately apparent. So part of the fun of it was really figuring out how each short story played into the overarching story arc of this book. The way it's set up is that, like I mentioned, the protagonists of this book are a black family in the 1950s and every single one of the short stories is from a different member of the family's perspective and they all have their own little weird adventures I guess you could call it. that makes it sound a lot happier than it is they all have their weird run-ins with the supernatural and I have to say this setup for the short stories really helped flesh out all of the individual characters they all feel real they all feel like they have their own distinct personalities and points of view and even though I am no historian it seemed to me like every single one of these characters in one way or another represents part of the black experience in the Jim Crow era of America. Two of them that stick out right off the bat are two of the main characters in the first short story which is also the longest one named Atticus and Montrose. They are a father and son who have a bit of a tumultuous relationship. Essentially the father is this kind of curmudgeonly old man who has no love for white America, he doesn't bend, he refuses to give any quarter or any benefit of the doubt to the country that has wronged him and his family and his people for so long. Whereas his son Atticus is a bit of a conformist, I guess, from his dad's perspective. He joined the military and he loves science fiction, which is in some ways, according to his dad at least, conforming to this country that has no respect or appreciation for his life or his value as a person. He's trying to assimilate in a society that hates him and the two of them have this tumultuous relationship which I feel like is kind of a vehicle for the themes that this book is trying to present to the audience. See this story is at the end of the day driven by its themes more than anything else. There is a lot of horror stuff going on in this book but it's not really about the horror. The horror elements are all there to provide thematic support for the ideas that the story is trying to present to the audience. And so the name Lovecraft Country and the invocation of H.P. Lovecraft is interesting because Lovecraft is ultimately about fear of the unknown. And Lovecraft himself as an individual and not just as a writer was terrified of the unknown. And that manifested in his stories but it also manifested in his views. See he actually was a big racist and the book is very aware of that fact that he sort of represents the fear of the unknown in a literal sense and in a thematic sense. So the book uses this idea of the fear of the unknown and juxtaposes the cosmic horror elements and supernatural stuff that's happening in the story with the more everyday racism and bigotry and xenophobia that people had to deal with which ultimately comes from the same place. It is a fear of the unknown. And so it juxtaposes the more out there elements of the story with the more everyday elements of the story to create a really tightly written thematic experience, one that I'm sure goes a lot deeper than my surface level reading of it. And I'm not qualified to do deep literary analysis, but even for me, I know enough to recognize when there's a lot more to something than meets the eye and that definitely applies to this book. So if that's your thing, check this book out. It's very entertaining. Like I said, it's a page turner, it's addictive, it's fun to read. I mean, fun might be the wrong word. 
since the subject matter is very much not fun, but it's a very entertaining read with some depth that I am sure goes a lot deeper than what I'm telling you about right now. Unsurprisingly, given that it is a book about black people in the 1950s, the characters in this story are very resilient and able to put up with some crazy bullshit in their day-to-day -day lives, which in a lot of ways makes them more qualified and more capable of dealing with the supernatural bullshit that comes their way throughout the course of this story. It's like, what is the point of being afraid of the unknown and being so terrified by the things that you don't understand when everyday life and the things that you do understand and see on a regular basis are already so terrifying? Fear of the unknown means nothing when the known world is already that bad. And honestly, as a reader, the scariest parts of this book are not the Lovecraftian parts of the book. That stuff is nothing compared to the fear generated by regular old hatred and bigotry, which I think is, again, one of the themes that this story is trying to put forward. Another common theme that I noticed throughout many of the short stories is this idea of brotherhood. You see, the protagonists all have these strong familial ties that help them be resilient to all of the things that they have to collectively put up with. They all collectively lift each other up and make each other stronger. This is contrasted in a lot of parts of the story with some of the antagonistic factions who are brothers and have a bond of brotherhood that is completely self-serving. They don't care about others. They only want things for themselves. And this is in spite of how much power they may or may not have and how much more power they could have if they simply worked together. So we have this contrast between the downtrodden who have their strong bonds of brotherhood that help them all collectively and we have the powerful antagonists who have weak self-serving bonds of brotherhood and really just eat themselves from the inside out. So again, we see some really strong thematic consistency throughout these stories. I have to say it's very impressive from that point of view, even though, again, I'm not really qualified to talk about it that much. So you get the idea that there's a lot of duality in this story. The duality of the black experience and the white experience in Jim Crow era America. The duality of horror, the cosmic supernatural horror that Lovecraft was so afraid of and wrote all his stories about, and the everyday horrors that Lovecraft himself represented in some ways and even partook in the bonds of brotherhood that can help or can hurt. It's just really tight writing all around. With all that said though, I'm still not a huge fan of short stories. I just prefer more uh, long form story arcs that are more closely connected. It wasn't so bad in this book. I didn't think it was like, a drag at any point because the short stories are pretty interconnected and all of them are pretty fast paced. But still, I felt varying degrees of interest during the various short stories. It's just an inherently hit or miss format in my opinion. None of them are outright misses, which is why I think this book is really good, but there are varying degrees of, of interest, I guess. Even the ones that I wasn't a huge fan of still do something interesting. And when they're at their best, which in my opinion, the first short story in this book is a fucking masterpiece. It is so, so good. It's also the longest one, which I think helps and makes the overall impression of the book stand out. And after having read it, I can definitely see why Jordan Peele would be interested in adapting this book because it gave me some serious Get Out vibes. So if you're a fan of Get Out, definitely read this book or watch the show when it comes out. I mean, it's up to you. For myself, I really like Get Out. I think it's a great movie and I really appreciate this book as well. It's just, there isn't much to dislike about it. It's a good page turner. It's interesting to read, it's fun to read, it's cleverly written, the characters are well defined, the themes are really strong, the horror is good in that it's creepy, but it's not like shit your pants scary, like you're not gonna have trouble sleeping after this, probably. So I feel like I can recommend it to people even if they aren't explicitly fans of horror. I read a comment online that said this book is kind of like goosebumps for adults, which I thought was really funny and honestly kind of accurate because the, the horror takes various shapes and forms throughout the book and it is kind of reminiscent of Goosebumps in some ways. So if you can handle that, you know, if Goosebumps for adults doesn't sound too scary, then it's probably not too scary for you. So overall, very good book. I recommend it to pretty much anyone. If you're not a fan of social commentary in your books, then you're probably the only person who I would 
outright say would not enjoy this book, but that's on you fam. I think that you are missing out and depriving yourself of some really good storytelling. So anyways, if you've read this book, let me know how you feel about it. If you haven't read this book, let me know why not. Or if you plan to, just, just let me know, man. Just, just let me know. All right. I'm talking to my camera about books because I have no one to talk to about books. So talk to me. Thank you. Please. Goodbye.